For six months, Lazel has been learning the ways of Faerun by your side, as you traveled together far and wide. A letter, written in a frail hand, interrupted your adventures. An invitation to a gathering of former allies, those who stood with you against the Netherbrain six months ago. The location is familiar, and though the road is hard and long, you would not miss this for the world. Thou wert called here, some from above, some below. For with thine bond, Together thou hast kept the wheel of fate spinning when it threatened to halt. Though thou wert drawn far apart in the months after the collapse of the Absolute, tonight fate renews thy bond once more. Thou shouldst take care to preserve it. It is a great weapon wielded in the hand of good. Go. Know one another once more. <laughs> I cannot remember the last time. Welcome to the epilogue. Chat with everyone. A few things that will probably be different from other spectros, except for Karnak, as we already saw. Her ending. Ah, my dear friend, it's been an age, has it not? You're looking very well indeed. Our skeletal friend will be very pleased to see I found my way here, despite my invitation getting lost in the post. Busy as ever. Better that than the reverse, wouldn't you say? Every major publishing house on the Sword Coast has been vying for my upcoming book on the subject of our adventures together. I've gotten quite good at replicating your signature, so you needn't even bother with the release form. You might help me with the title, though. I'm considering the hero and me. What do you think? Oh, terribly sorry, but you mistake me, my friend. I'm only accepting complimentary feedback at this time. Perhaps, once the manuscript is finished, you'd even be willing to write a foreword? Or better yet, I'll write a draft and you can just sign your name. Better still, I'll sign it for you, hmm? Ah, your success really has been wonderful for my reputation. But you mustn't let me hog your attention all night, my friend. You've many friends to chat to, and I'd love to listen in. <laughs> you made it! <laughs> now the revelry can truly be... Don't... Don't worry, friend. I'll be sure to send your royalties by post once the manuscript's published. I'm certain I have your address around here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's still city. Uh, he has the potions for animals speaking for animals. But I cannot access his store. Why would I, right, uh, Larian? Like you couldn't insert the potions here or in my inventory. This calls for careful footwork. Let's see what you're hiding. Yeah. Sorry, friend, I'll be sure to send your royalties by post once the manuscript's published. And there is no I'm menu here. I have your address around here somewhere. <laughs> so I guess I'll have to use uh, a bloody uh, cheat engine. So be right back. 
There we go. Starting to wonder if you'd show up. <laughs> you can say that with a straight face after all the times I had to come to your aid. Well, come here, will you? It's been forever. a little more substantial than before. Less camping and scrounging off the land, I take it. I suppose I do, don't I? I'm glad you seem well. Trudy. I had no doubt. But I'm glad to hear you say it all the same. I found a little cottage. Abandoned, half ruined. There's a lot of such places to be found thanks to the Absolute's armies. I've been making it my own. Four dogs, eight cats, nine chickens, six pigeons, four sheep, a milk cow named Daphne, a squirrel who's far too clever for her own good, and a wolf cub. I found orphaned in some woods. He's just a frightened little pup. He has no idea what he'll grow up to be. And maybe, with me there to guide him, who knows what he'll become. It's amazing what can happen with the right nurturing. I've called him Buttons, because he has different colored eyes like buttons on a ragdoll. Healing. Learning to live again. It's hard to think of all that was robbed from them, but they're intent on making every day count for double. My mother's mind still drifts every now and again, but she has more good days than not so good days. She taught me her recipe for apple and plum pie, and when I tasted it, I actually remembered it from when I was a little girl. Some things can't be taken from you, it seems. Father's making himself useful, helping me fix up the cottage and caring for the animals. His wolf form is very useful in helping Buttons to acclimatize. I think part of him wishes I'd ended up as a lycanthrope as well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm rambling. Family life and pastry recipes Probably aren't the most interesting topics for such a historic reunion. I couldn't have said it better myself. Just be sure to take your own advice whenever you can. You've earned it. Must I? You presume a great deal. I'm joking. Of course I want to know. Tell me all. Do you ever rest? Think of all those poor, budding adventurers looking to make a name for themselves. Take some time off and give them a chance, why don't you? Hopefully these meetups will become a regular occurrence. It's not that I miss the tadpoles, but at least it brought us together. Now we've got to make the extra effort ourselves. I'm sure we will, but let's be proactive about it all the same. We're more than capable. After all, we've faced down bigger threats than wrangling together a few social calendars. Oh, before you go, how does a red dragon plan their day? They don't. They just wing it. <laughs> Sorry. 
My father's got years of terrible jokes stocked up that he never got to tell me when I was younger, but lucky for him, I never heard them. And seemingly, I am easily amused. I know. I would have been an open book to you in no time. But don't pretend you didn't like the mystery. Go on. You've got mingling to do. I'll work on my punchlines some more. Very well. Friend? Friend! You came! Big Brother Scratch, too! Happy! Widders? No! You smell very delicious! Follow smell, find you! Yes, big! But Scratch is smart, teaches me many things, like Big Brother. Lots! Make friends with a turtle, a cat, a kraken. Kraken eats my cat friend, so I bite, kill. With shiny clothes, I am strong. Tired now. Want sleep? Want cave? Nice lady. She gives pets and tasty things. I like her. I go to her. I wonder what's the uh, condition to make Shadow Heart uh, talk about that imp or whatever from their D&D adventure. I believe it's somewhere in the game. I've missed wine. Had to resort to making my own cider recently, which isn't bad, don't get me wrong. But a girl can't have fun with apples alone. I mean now. This <laughs> you might be onto something there, though the name might need work. Somehow it sounds rude, even though I know otherwise. I suppose it's worth a try. It might keep the animals amused for a while. Hmm, let me see. Oh, what did the amorous boar say to the sow? Ha, not quite. Fancy, uh, but oink? Oh, come on, you loved it. I'll wager I'll overhear you telling that to someone else before the night is out. Oh, hell's what? Not another adventure, is it? I'm quite content with my semi retirement. The owlbear. Of course I'll have him. If he wants to come with me, that is. I'd have offered sooner, but everything was a blur after the battle. I thought he'd gone to roam free. I'll have to find somewhere for him to sleep, of course. He'd get stuck in the door of my cottage. Maybe the barn. It's as warm as anywhere, as long as he gets along with Daphne. I suppose you're right. He's come a long way since he first wandered into our camp. We all have. I can picture the look on my parents' faces already. Always. That hit the spot. 
don't be a stranger. You know, I never really imagined Withers as much of a party thrower. But then again, I suppose our camps weren't taking care of themselves while we were out gallivanting, were they? There's hidden depths in that lovable husk. Oh no, that's all part of the fun. You know me, I can't resist a bit of mystery. Indeed. Healing can only do so much. We'd likely be dead somewhere out in the wilderness if not for him. Don't be a stranger. Oh, I've seen everything. My, you'll make the others jealous if you spend much more time with Don't be a stranger. Mm. I give up. Happy? Gonna get pets? Gonna play. Gonna live with nice lady. <laughs> yes. Miss this. Familiar sight. Scratch can't quite speak around the thing he has in his mouth. I found this. It smelled like you, so I kept it. Seemed like something you might like to throw. So am I. I've got a nice home in the city now. A girl named Mindy says I'm her best friend. She's mine too. Also you and Albert. I've got so many best friends, I hardly know who to snuggle. I certainly have, and I always will. Forever, I think. And so will you. You know best, but a little fetch never hurt anyone, as far as I know. Have a look. <laughs> you see, Boo? I told you our friend was near. Ah, breathe deep, Boo. The smell of heroes sings from every stone in this place. Ah, to meet again where your journey began, my friend. An honor. For Minsk and his hamster both. Oh, and for Happy also. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> Honored, of course. He is not a guest, but your newest follower. It is just this day that Happy learned of your legend, while we gazed down upon the very city you saved. He dangled me from the high hall, upside down, for two hours. Eh, the guild should not go creeping in high places if they do not have the stomach for them, hmm? It is well for Happy the strange portal appeared when it did. Minsk's arm was growing exum. So I have. Though it is a piece made more from blade and boot than it is any sense of brotherhood. Nine fingers forbade any looting of the Illithid's fleshy vessels. And so Minsk guards what remains of the battle site, even from her. But where Minsk might once have thrown any sneaking scoundrels from the tower top, now I tell them of you. How you ruled the wickedness within. How they might do the same. Yes, yes, I'll rule it. I'll be better. No, oh, of course. It is still for Boo to decide if they live or die. Oh. Oh, God. But enough, my friend. I cannot tell your tale if I do not know the whole of it. Minsk and Boo would know where you have been, what you have done. Ah, 
Ah, uh -huh, the lovebirds still nest together then? <laughs> Minsk is glad. For what is life without a companion? Though I am thinking yours does not sit on your shoulders, eh? Ah, you are right, Boo. <laughs> that is uh, none of Minsk's business. Now, halfling, Boo will not have you embarrassing him in front of his friends. So you are to know the rest of the company you keep. Will Ravenguard, the Blade of Frontiers, Devil Horned and Angel Hearted. Lazel of Crash Killer, true child of Gith and true friend to Boo. Though she will tick and say it is not so. Astarian, who is banished by the sun itself for fear his spawnish soul might outshine it. We visit him much down in the dark places, though he often moves his lair without remembering to tell Min Square. Gale, the man who would be a god, but then thought better of it. Boo thinks better of him for it, too. Shadowheart, two gods tugged at her soul, but she managed to keep it all for herself in the end. Wait, Boo, did, did she do something with her hair? Halsin, archdruid of archers somewhere. He is a much better man than he smells. And there is an absence. Karlak, who would have been the heart of this celebration, had she not lost her heart in turn. Saving your city was her last act in this life. Which is why Minsk will make sure the guild honors her, yes? Study them well, sneak thief. For the best among them will be a guide for your guild. Heroes who put the city before themselves. Who never falter in their duty. And more than this, who never arrive to a party without even a gift for the host. But wait! Go, my friend. Be among our friends. There is much work yet to be done before this one is fit to join them. He's going to kill me, isn't he? Not the big mad bastard. The hamster. We shall conclude. Who will... I hope the sun takes its time slipping through the hourglass. Dub. We should make this a tra well. See. <sighs> Dub. We should make this a tradition. Than any of the patriarchs dreary name to be cruel. I said it to you. Well now. You can make yourself presentable when you have a mind to. Ha ha ha. Ah. How nice to be understood again. I have spent the past months bickering with builders and bankers, all to restore the city exactly as it was. Same twisting alleys for purse pickers, same wooden buildings ready to get burnt by next year's dragon, same cisterns overflowing, huh? Baldorians simply get on with it. <laughs> Stubbornness, civic spirit, plain stupidity. Perhaps all three, but nothing I will sniff at any longer. Harpers have come from half the world over to lend aid. Farmers, masons, healers. My own son, Jord, has been wooed to their ranks. Already he plans crop cycles in Worms Crossing. Not so for my daughter. Ryan's rejoined the Flaming Fist. Temporarily, you understand. To organize the craftsmen. Though she spends more time locking up comrades for pocketing eight ones. They might learn a thing or two if they don't expel her. Again. Honestly, much more sitting down than I'd like. 
Mistake me not. There is still much to be done. Plans to make, maps to be frowned over. But my children are more than capable of doing it. Even the young ones tire of me peeking over their shoulders. This night offers them a brief respite from me, at least. And this place, now I look at it, it is where you all spent your first night together, no? A fine spot for an adventure to begin. A fine spot indeed. And I them. But I cast a little more shade than I would like. And they are only beginning to see the sun. Which is my way of saying... I'd like to see the open road once more. Just for a time. I'll find my way back. As I always do. I admit defeat. Baldur's Gate is my home. But that is the thing about home. The only way to see it clearly is to leave. And look back. For a little while, at least. For all your travels, I hope you have arrived where you want to be. Home. Whatever that means to you. Ah, oh, sentiment. With the greatest affection, I can think of better ways to sour our stomachs. I must inspect the refreshments. You'll never know. Some ne'er-do-well might have tampered with the wine. Well, look who decided to turn up. I wasn't sure our withered old friend could live up to his promise. But here we are. And you're looking more delicious than ever, if you don't mind me saying. Whatever you've been doing with your time, it clearly worked wonders. Ah, so it's the healthy glow you get from being a good person. That explains my pallor. But I'm glad to see the world has treated you well. You've earned it. We both have, in fact. And where better to celebrate our good fortune? An old haunt with old friends. <laughs> Cheeky. I've been very well behaved. Thank you. I've taken a turn as an adventurer and hero. <laughs> it turns out no one actually cares about murder, as long as you murder the right people. And apparently I'm rather good at it. <laughs> Let's not get carried away, darling. I'm still me. Perhaps more me than I've ever been. <laughs> no, this is all me. I swear. Don't get me wrong. I was a mess at first. Every day I yearned for the sun and mourned my curse to live in the shadows. But in time, I realized that darkness is as much a part of me as my fangs. This is only a curse as long as I refuse to embrace the shadows. So, I decided I would. I decided not to be defined by the choices other people made, by what other people did to me. My past may be done, but my present, my future, they're mine. This is who I am, in all my glory, for better and for worse. That being said, I haven't completely given up on returning to the sun. 
If the opportunity presented itself, well, I wouldn't say no. But until then, I am happy. We've had quite the journey, you and I. From the moment I first threatened you, I knew you were someone special. Someone to take on the world with. I will miss our time together. But then again, maybe this isn't goodbye. So much as it's, um, see you later, darling. After everything, this feels nice. A chance to take a breath, uh, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Well, well, look what the Tressim dragged in. Professor Gail Decarius of Blackstaff Academy, educator of the esteemed School of Illusion. A pleasure to remake your acquaintance. I think it makes perfect sense. Who better to warn of the perils of misusing magic than someone who was once only a wayward sneeze away from destroying a mid-sized settlement? Don't remind me of those terrible times, Mr. Dakarios. My blood pressure has only just recovered. I fear my students find me somewhat intimidating due to my, uh, explosive former reputation. I seem to put the fear of the gods into them. Or the fear of Mistra, to be more specific. I surrendered the crown of Carsus to her, as I told you I would. And in return, she cured me of the orb at last. Even now, I struggle to put the feelings into words. It was like... Exhaling for the first time after holding my breath for so very long. Of course, I haven't clarified with my students that the orb is no longer a threat. The legend of my explosive capabilities is an excellent means of controlling a classroom. Too good, if anything. I spend most of my time trying to convince them how much fun the study of magic can be. But it'd be easier to crack a smile on an intellect devourer than some of my pupils. I did. But meeting you, traveling the strangest of roads together, I learned to see myself differently, see the weave differently. In fact, I've actually been considering writing down the story of our adventures, the true tale of our flawed but ultimately endearing troop and the trials and tribulations we overcame. I can hardly leave it to the likes of Volo to give a true account of our adventures. And no one would believe him if he did. That odious man truly frizzles my whiskers. Long-haired miniature dragon, he calls me. Tressim is much less of a mouthful. And what of you? What are you making of this newfound lease of life we earned? And I couldn't be happier for you. A fitting reward for the sacrifices you made in getting here. I've told my students plenty of tales about our escapades. You're something of a hero to them, you know? I'd be delighted to introduce you to my current cohort as a guest lecturer, perhaps. I'm sure they'd have plenty of questions for you. I don't see why not. Two heads are better than one, unless you're dealing with an Etin. Of course, you'll be most welcome to stay with me in my tower. Uh -huh. mm -mm. Uh, my apologies, Tara. That would be our tower. It will give us plenty of time to catch up on your adventures. I'm very curious to know what you've been up to these past months. But I suspect the telling of that tale would keep you tied to me all evening. So, 
In the spirit of selflessness, I encourage you to mix and mingle for now, with time enough to come. Oh, right. You. Hello. Yes, I'm certain it is. As for you, well, I've heard congratulations are in order. You helped Mr. Dakario save Baldur's Gate from the Absolute, isn't that right? Well done. Despite my old friend's genius, he'd have blown himself up long ago if not for the help of friends like you and I. You ought to come visit myself and Gail when you're able, if you can extract yourself from what I'm sure are very important responsibilities. We'll send word by pigeon when we've need of you. I used to have a taste for them, but a great many things have changed in recent months. Ta-ta, darling. You would think someone of my vintage would be inured to the passage of time. Yet these past six months have seemed endless without your company. But now, our paths cross once more. <laughs> Just as I hoped they would, more like. The Oak Father has been kind to me this past while. Yet I cannot forget the bond we all forged together. It is one that can weather any distance, any passage of time. I know it can, for I feel the longing for old friends in my heart each day. I always do. Should I ever decline, assume a doppelganger has taken my place. That was more than worth the wait. Oh, apologies. <laughs> you can probably understand my eagerness. I shall be as gentle as a feather next time. Now, we have much to catch up on. Do not allow me to ramble on. I am eager to hear all you've been doing. In that case, very well. Our community grows rapidly. In six months, we have turned what was once a shadowy wasteland into a true home for all. In another six months, I would wager the scars of the past will be entirely invisible, even to those who remember them. The old masonry of Moonrise Towers and Rythwin have been repurposed into new homes, and the land is rich with harvests and Bountiful trees. Nature and civilization are in harmony. Stronger together. Of course. Disagreements, friction, opposing cultures, and our fair share of petty nonsense that I shall not bore you with. It is to be expected, wherever people gather to make a life for themselves. And, in truth, I think I am better able to help them navigate it than I ever was as Archdruid of the Grove. I am wiser, perhaps, but I am certainly happier. Hardships are rare and diminished when you are where you truly want to be. You are welcome whenever you like, and for however long you please. Now, please, Tell me all, and spare no details. I shall not lie. 
I have an ulterior motive in wishing to hear all. It is the children, you see. My charges. Their appetite for bedtime tales is greater than I could ever have anticipated. Another story, Daddy Halsin. Another is the chorus that greets me each nightfall. They have all but exhausted my repertoire in but a few short months. No mean feat given the lifetime I have lived. I desperately need new material, please. My reputation is at stake. I am all ears, though I never cared for that phrase. A rather unsettling image. I am glad you have kept yourself occupied. <laughs> no doubt I'll be able to spin a few yarns for the children from this. Hmm. Thank you. Now, it would be cruel of me to hoard you all to myself for the evening. As much as I would like to. I shall leave you to the others for now. Unless there was anything else. <laughs> Quite often. They come and go as they please. But with so many playmates to avail of, <laughs> they are far from strangers. They ask after you often. What you did for them will never be forgotten. I can see it in the land all around me. But more importantly, I see it in their faces whenever they visit. To make a child smile is to dabble with the power of gods as far as I'm concerned. I spend half my days in ursine form. The children demand it. I had a score of them taking turns riding upon my back just days ago. <sighs> I'm glad they are so comfortable with the Oak Father's creations. But they must learn that not all are as amiable as I am. A lesson for another time, though. They deserve some joy. As for roaming, that impulse has dwindled, I must admit. Perhaps because I have found where I am meant to be. On occasion, but I prefer not to interfere. Francesca of the High Forest is Archdruid now, and by all accounts, she has proven to be a steady and wise influence. Even Korga may yet find true balance, thanks to her influence. As did I, but somehow I feel like I no longer need to roam. That I have found something worthy laying roots for. Amazing what can be discovered about oneself, even at a ripe old age. Uh, before you go, I have something for you. Just a little keepsake, really. Do you remember how I told you I like to whittle? I made this. <laughs> Ducks are my favorite, but I thought they were particularly fitting in this case. They are migratory birds, of course, traveling far and wide with the turn of the seasons. Yet, they always find their way back to where they belong. <laughs> Just like old friends find themselves back in each other's company. Oh, I am well aware, trust me. Now, I've taken up enough of your time. Go on, enjoy the festivities. Gods, it's so good to see you. It's been far too long. I... Hold on a moment. Do you smell that? You take in every scent the night breeze carries. 
sweet honeysuckle, tender violets, and an earthy fragrance you can't quite recognize. Forest trees draped in moss, bittersweet, smoky, and that faintest hint of vanilla. Reminds me of the wild and oak, the oldest and most storied tree in all of the Sword Coast. I haven't visited since the absolute fell. Turns out rebuilding a city requires more than a simple wave of a duke's hand. Bargains must be made, alliances must be forged, customs must be considered. Father leaves me to my own devices, though he's got no shortage of advice when I ask for it. Still, I make the decisions I see fit. The ones I think will restore the city to glory. I serve only Baldur's Gate, not a devil of the first hell. Father's very well, and back in his element, commanding the flaming fist with as brave a heart as ever. Floric, bless her soul, convinced him to withhold the lashings and scoldings, though I know he was tempted. The likes of Gortash can bend people's minds with a few chosen words. No tadpole needed. Bane's chosen primed the fist for a war they weren't meant to win. He convinced them there was an assassin hiding in every shadow, that cruelty was the correct answer to crisis. With a few exceptions, fathers pardoned every last fist. If my forgiveness not be tears will, so be it. I shall forgive them all the same. His words, not mine. He still believes in the bow and the blade, but with Floric's help, he's teaching the fist a new lesson. Valor is found not in the wounds you inflict, but in the lives that you have bettered. May they all take it to heart. I've had more than a few challenges, given the horns sprouting from my head. The people know me as one of the champions who saved their beloved city. They know Raven Guard blood flows through my veins. The Patriarchs, the aristocracy, the councils of Waterdeep and Arm. Their arms aren't so wide open. Still, there's no friction that can't be greased with a sly promise or a proposition. Disbanded to be formed anew. I don't expect a soldier or street sweeper to see through the schemes of a tyrant like Gortash. But the city's lords and ladies were all too eager to abandon their oaths and bend the knee. My father, older Ravenguard, is now Grand Duke of the Triad, Keeper of the Fist. Floric is now Grand Duke of the Crossing, the face of devotion. And I am Will Ravenguard, Grand Duke of the Worm, Heart of the Gate. We will yet be four. Until such time and after, we will enact the will of the People's Parliament. Baldur's Gate is nothing without its citizens, both in the upper and lower. Our duty is to them, and only them. The jewel of the coast will shine ever bright, welcoming the weak and the weary from wherever they hail. We are building new housing, not just shanties, but homes where families can rest their heads, plant gardens, pursue happiness. Amazing what can be done when Parliament and the Council pressure the upper city elites to open their coffers. <laughs> I'm sure the Silver Shields can make do without a few more jeweled crowns. Of course. Never. The Hexes and Eldritch Blasts, losing them took getting used to. They left behind a cold abyss where fire once raged. So I stoked a new one. Now the burning comes from within me, not from the depths of Avernus. I've missed you too. The rush of battles we fought, the heart to hearts, the nights around the fire, the comfort of knowing I didn't face the unknown alone. If I had to do it all over again, and I'd rather not, to be clear, I can't imagine not having you at my side. Go on, the night's young. You shouldn't waste a moment of it. 
or waste a single drop of wine for that matter. I plan on downing half a bottle myself. Oops, did I say half a bottle? I meant half a dozen. <laughs> A night without care. No worry, no obligation. It's been too long. Jacques von Fendel. I thought watching you slay Vlacket's hunters in the Cliffs of Swords' teeth might be the month's pinnacle. But I was wrong. Being right here, with you, is an infinitely greater pleasure. Alas, I can only rest so long. I've got wind of a Githyanki outpost hidden deep in Chult, the last of Vlacket's Sword Coast strongholds. I mean to slay every last Sarth and Kithrak. And I mean for you to join me. <sighs> right you are. Not every night is for spilling blood. I shouldn't be so callous as to spoil the quiet pleasures of this one. Now go, mingle while you can. That's the word, right? Mingle? I won't be far. Not tonight. Not ever. Of course. I have complete trust in our newest allies. Zahn is in fine hands tonight. What a wonder he is. He will be a fine warrior, if he chooses. Or a poet, or an explorer, or a scholar. I was afforded a destiny of my own choosing. When he comes of age, it is only right I give Zahn the same. Love. Until I knew you, I thought the mere idea a joke. A weakness indulged only by lesser species. You proved me a fool. I am forever grateful. I will never grow tired of. Oh. oh, pardon me. Yeah, let's don't forget about our bard little here singing silently. Oh, hello. Let me guess, you've got some suggestions about the music choice. <laughs> I find it hard to summon up the trademark pep these days. You have no idea who I am, do you? I thought Withers might have set the stage a little. You know. <laughs> You're bloody right. 
It is an honor. Finally, the scribe picks an adventurer of substance, of culture. What can I do you for? Your wish is my... etc. What song do you want? Fantastic idea. It'll suit the whole affair perfectly. It's a shame that you cannot play along with him. Yeah, that does you already know them. Beautiful fate. Grander than any of the Patriarch's dreary bank. Mm. Uh, this seems pretty red, but ugh, no, not even close. Oh, I've seen every corner of the world. I just know what I like. That's my mother's city. And the dining table. And the heart. And above all, your life. Spot of deja vu.
Thou feelst it still. She is not here. She who was the boldest. Hast thy thoughts been with brave Karlak often? Correct. Not in planes material, elemental, nor transitive can her like be found. In but a dozen ten days, an entire life was lived. More than mortal years. Mortal centuries were hers. Thy band, thy bond, gave that life to her. In the fugue plain, her soul burns so bright, it pains the gods to look upon. Recall that in time, all changes and all is rejoined. Thou shalt be with her again. What indeed? Prick up thy ears and listen. The balance of the world restored. The balance of these lives, mortal and otherwise, brought to account. Hear me, thou heroes, wastrels, friends. I have waited long to tell you these words. It is over. For now. played thy part in weaving the fabric of fate itself, but for every thread you sewed, so did the gods unravel another. Sleep, rest, revel, but be ready, for thou mayst yet be needed. Until we meet again, I wish thee every possible fortune, health, wealth, love, and above all, problems worth solving. Includes our honor mode run. It's been fun. It was sometimes in a few parts difficult, and a lot of few fights that almost ended this run. There was one not recorded uh, in the second act. The fight that now is considered a boss fight after part six. And of course, answer was quite uh, bullshit. But anyway, yeah. Will there be more? Maybe if you want to. Uh, I have many ideas uh, for next playthroughs. For example, there are those uh, you know hit, uh, cold, uh, poison attributes, uh, stacks. Just like I used uh, um, uh, orbs uh, of radiance, radi radiant orbs. So, for example, I could make all mages, uh, four mages. For example, Karak, since he's a fifthling, be a mage that utilizes fire or sorcerer utilizing fire. Uh, Astarion as a poison base or acid, etc., etc., or 
instead of mages, you know, those uh, martial, uh, martial subclasses that has magic like uh, Eldritch Knight, uh, Trickster, Arcane Trickster, uh, the Berserker with uh, the Barbarian with fame, uh, Wild Magic, and of course, Monk of the Four Elements. There's plenty of others. Maybe if, if your own idea how could I do next? Because after patch six, they buffed some bosses. But yeah, that will be it for today. For, for now, thank you for watching, and see you all in whatever comes next. Probably I need to. Mm, finish uh, Rogue Trader, so I'll probably do this next, or maybe something else, I'm not sure yet. I have lots of plans, but not enough time to do everything, such as life. You have work on your main agenda. So let's skip to the final message from Withers. There thou art, the dead three. Thy faces, gods. Thy actions, barely worthy of the name. Didst truly believe thy ploy would succeed? Didst believe I would not notice? Thou sought to bolster thy strength by taking away the souls of mortals. But souls vanish when their hosts become mind flayers. Didst think the other gods would not notice? Gods thou may be, yet thou hast proven thyself fools, everyone. The supplication of Bane, the whimper of Baal, the death mule of Merkel. Felled by mortals, I overestimated thee. They did not. Vermin, away. Thou wilt trouble us no more.